Good morning, folks. We've got solar flares, geophysics, and astrophysics on deck today. We're watching those flare events coming from the northern sunspot next to the departing coronal hole. There were actually three eruptions from the grouping, with the first lacking a larger flare component. Meanwhile, the incoming active region top left took the day off from eruptive activity. The solar flares were higher M-class events, with the second one nearly hitting X-class range. In 304 angstroms, you will see all three events, with the bulk plasma clearly heading out ahead of Earth's orbit to the right, but with the breadth of the CMEs produced, having a good potential to impact Earth at the tail end of the coronal hole stream. The Enlil spiral has been updated to show one of those CMEs with a good chance of impacting Earth. So over the coming days, we should be seeing the coronal hole stream impact followed by at least one CME impact. Geomagnetic storm likelihood is relatively high this week, but none should reach major levels. Just all depends on the successive timing and interplanetary magnetic field. Eyes on the sun for more, including that incoming region which went quiet during this latest uptick. We're coming back to solar forcing of the monsoon and finding some of the more extreme divergences from normal in the early Holocene, clearly linked to solar activity and millennial scale forcing, which would have to be the Bond events or dansgaard oschger events. We have previously seen those cycles tied to solar activity and the resulting effect on monsoon described here is an excellent confirmation of the bigger total timeline and picture of the event. Speaking of confirmations, yet another look at pre-seismic anomalies. This one is good because it not only points to the total electron content signals, but the resulting atmospheric pressure gradient anomalies, which are both identified in our textbook as critical precursory indicators of a big earthquake to come. By the way, those earthquake precursors are detailed in Chapter 7 of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, and the previous story about millennial scale forcing and solar influence is broken down even deeper in our latest supplement, which not only updates Weatherman's Guide, but our book on Earth's disaster cycles, the next end of the world, which is where we really begin breaking into nova astronomy. Today, we've got two in that realm, starting with the silicate dust produced in a recent outburst of a known recurrent nova. This is the starting block for the glass production in NOVA events. It's a little Easter egg for those here who have been watching enough to know about the microtectite evidence of previous solar micro-NOVA events. And lastly, the most recurrent NOVA known, the every year boomer in Andromeda just had another event. Indeed, recurrent NOVA events can happen annually or millions of years apart depending on the star, where they are in the galaxy, and what kind of galaxy it is. Many, like our sun, appear to be somewhere in the middle, around 12,000 years. 11 days until our October events begin in Arizona, there are still tickets to the Sound Sanctuary event in Scottsdale on the 13th. Link to the event, to our playlist, to our websites, and to our books, all found in the description box below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.